as I said the other night, it's, I've been doing this for 60 years as a server, an altar server in the choir, in the seminary, and uh, for 46 years as a priest, although uh, for the first 11 years I had to let my pastor do all this service, and I was dying to do this service. But for the last 35 years, I've been the one presiding over the service, and it's, it's magical. It always is. Um, you know, seated up here, I get to look at all of you, and I watch you with those little candles. And I don't know what it tells you or says to you, but here we light that fire out there. We light the Easter candle, which, by the way, will be lit for every service, every Mass, from now until Pentecost. Because Easter is tonight, tomorrow, but the Easter season is for 50 days until we come to Pentecost, when the Spirit is sent upon the early church. So this will stay right in this place, at the center of the church, and be the light of Christ, burning brightly for us. And while I was seated up there, I looked out at this candle, and all the little candles, and I said, do you get it? We didn't just walk in with this candle, we lit our candles from this candle. We took the light of Christ into ourselves, and then we become the light of Christ. And what makes this even more exciting tonight is there's 15 people here, one adult woman and 14 children, who are going to receive this light of Christ, especially tonight, by being baptized and confirmed, and they will receive their first Eucharist. This is extraordinary because we get to see them becoming what we already are. We get to see them receiving the light that we already have. Actually, if you are one of the people that comes to the 8 a.m. Mass on Sundays, we've seen them coming for the last about 11 months, come to that Mass, we hear the readings from the Word of God, and then at the end of that, I send them forth across the street with the catechist to open up or, or unpack or listen to that Word of God through each other to share what they heard. What did you receive? What was God saying to you? So tonight, after doing that for 11 months, they come here with their godparents and they will be emerged into those waters to be baptized. They will be anointed and confirmed in their faith, and they will receive their first Eucharist. And they are saying, now we have the light, and we're going to go out in the world with that light, and we're going to share that light with the world. Now, before I get to that light, let me just say, we left that part of the service and went into a listening to the Word of God. And we heard these ancient stories, the story of creation. We heard the story of Abraham. We heard the story of Moses and freeing the people from the slavery of Egypt. We heard of those life-giving waters, those waters of grace and baptism. And then we sang our glory to God and we listened then to the readings as we do at every Mass, just, just one reading today, the Epistle, and then we heard the Gospel story of the Resurrection. And not actually of the Resurrection, because there's no story of the Resurrection. There's the stories after the Resurrection. And here was the surprise. Two Marys went to the tomb to go take care of the tomb out of love for Jesus. They went to... to to take the weeds away and make sure everything was beautiful because that was a sacred place for them, the, the body of their Lord who had died. But they get there and they find there's no Jesus. And these angels tell them he's been raised. And although they did not see the resurrection, they saw the effects of the resurrection. There was a body present and they were told, will go ahead of them and go to Galilee and proclaim this to others. And for 2,000 years, a little more than 2,000 years, we have believed deeply in this story. Not only did he die on that cross, not only was he led to that place and then out of 
jealousy and anger and hatred and all kinds of awfulness, they killed him. And as they were doing it to him, he never said one single negative word. In fact, he forgave them and said words of love. And then they put him in a tomb, they buried him, and three days later, as they had been foretold, he was raised from the dead. And we believe in this story of our faith, and it really just takes belief. It just takes belief that what Jesus says to us is, all of us will come to that time of mortal death, but we will also come through that mortal death to an immortal life, to a life forever with our God. And that's what we celebrate with all of its glory on this Easter night. Now, we will move into two other parts of our celebration in just a moment, and the next one will be baptizing these 15 people and then welcoming them through that baptism into our faith. And then we will finish our celebration with the Eucharistic part and give them their first communion and also celebrate our reception of the Eucharist as we always do. But I think to myself, it's so important, especially on this night when we actually celebrate the resurrection, which we celebrate at every Mass, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. That's the, the core of our faith. But this night is different. This night is special. This is a very holy night. And we do all, all these different things. We light that fire. We light this dark candle. We light God's word in a greater depth. We sing of our faith and we celebrate this life that we have because we are believers in the Lord Jesus. And we're asked to go forth from this day as we celebrate Easter and to believe what we already did in symbol. We receive the light and we listen to the word of God in the light. And we were declaring, whether you know it or not, we were declaring we are people of the light. We have the light of Christ alive in us. And not only that, we are capable of giving this light to others. I've always enjoyed this because, um, actually, I, this day is, is a headache day for me. It's, it's just so many things that, that go into this service. But at the same time, every bit of it is beautiful. So, at the last minute, I'm saying, can you turn out those lights? And we're not going to have lights for the... Uh, Robert, will you have a light for your piano? And, and can we have some lights for the readers? But we can't turn on the lights. And, and we're all in darkness. And, and I say, can we pull it off? Can we make it happen? And there's all these little tiny details that are a part of this night. But they make up this night. And when I sit up there in the chair and I look out at this church in darkness... But see, individuals holding the light. I say, ah, that's our faith. That's our faith. If it were just about me up here preaching or something, what is that? It's about all of us gathered here. It's about hearing the word of God and believing in that word and then making a difference with it. Now, I tell you, this week alone, I, I, I just can't believe what I hear in the news I go to YouTube, I'm a fan of YouTube, and you get all these things. There, I think there were three police uh, chases over the last day. There was one where a policeman stopped somebody in South LA, not far from where I was in the parish down there, and, and then the guy uh, ran over the cop, ran over his legs, and probably broke his legs. And then I'm looking at these uh, knifings. These have become more popular than shootings now, I think. I, I can't believe it. Along the metro, there, there's all these multiple knifings. And I'm th I think to myself, Perry Liker, be careful about going out. I mean, there's crazy people out there. You're, you, you go to a store and somebody knifes you or somebody's shooting or somebody's doing something crazy or... Uh, robbing your car, and I'm thinking to myself, 
What a world we live in. But you know, that's why this is so important tonight. Because this world is begging and pleading for more life. This world is screaming for this message of love. This world should look to the cross and see Jesus up there being crucified, spit on, stripped, and beaten, and crown of thorns shoved into his head, and he's nailed to a cross and dying, and he says, Father, forgive them. Who does that except people of profound faith, people who believe in love? And so we should be very thrilled, as I know I am tonight, that 15 people here tonight these are people over the age of seven. We're not baptizing infants. But the church says anyone seven years and older, they need to go through a process to come to this night. This is the only night of the whole year that we can baptize adults and children over at the age of seven on the night of Easter. And it says to me how powerful is this moment to receive the light of Christ and to become the light of Christ for this world. We are in desperate need of it. Desperate need. And I'm so joyful to have these 15, 14 young people, an adult, who will celebrate tonight. And I'm going to say just a couple of words in Spanish. You know, I repeat here, told them, okay, yo creo que el simbolismo de este clave. I think I need a new battery, okay? Wow. <laughs> Estamos aquí celebrando la recepción de la nueva luz, el fuego, el fuego, quien es Dios, quien es Cristo. Y después, um, haciendo este fuego nuevo, este luz de la velita. Y después, tomando esta luz de las velas, individuos que tenemos, estamos aquí teniendo en nuestras manos la luz de Cristo. En nuestras manos, en nuestras manos, declarando al mundo, somos un parte de esta luz. Tenemos la luz adentro de nosotros. Estamos aquí a re, no solo, solamente recibir la luz, pero dar la luz, dar la luz al mundo. Entonces, es de noche, qué bonito, porque hay 15 personas que van a recibir esta luz fuertísimamente en su bautismo y confirmación, y la primera vez a recibir la comunión, la Eucaristía, el cuerpo de Cristo. Entonces, esta es un, una noche singular, una noche singular. Y estos niños y este un adulto están aquí a declarar nosotros el poder de la luz que reciben en nuestra fe.